version 4 is simply like version 2, but the lenses are different. So here I've got a 30 LPI, 30 lenses per inch or lenticules per inch. And on the other side, I've got 60 lenses per inch. This creates a different field of view. So rather than seeing the exact image at the exact scale in the background, it actually creates something that shrinks everything down. Something odd begins to happen when we use larger sheets. The background repeats in long, narrow parts. They look identical, but they are not, as each part is a slightly different angled perspective of the same background. To correct for this, we can curve the material to stretch each part to allow it to match the apparent aspect ratio of the background objects. The viewer moving will create an anomaly of movement on the lens. If I flip the material so that now the big lens is towards you and the little lens is away, now you're going to see a smaller field of view through the material than you would out of version 2. The image on the left is version 4 and the image on the right is version 5. And it's obvious there's a marked difference between the two of them. Version 4 has the correct perspective, but it creates a lot of movement when the viewer is moving side to side. Version 5 on the right is much more stable to the viewer's side-to-side -side movements, but everything in the background is now reversed. The background also repeats in version 5, but even more extreme than version 4. Curving the material makes little difference to the narrow repeating parts, but there's something special happening here that I'll get back to in just over a minute. Here I have two version 4s, and to make version 6, we simply place both version 4s together. Version 6 as well as version 3 are very difficult to work with in this prototype stage, as not only do I need to line up each lens that makes up each double-sided piece, I also need to line up the two double-sided pieces in relation to each other. And I have to do this without a liquid to bond them together as a liquid in between the two double-sided sheets nullifies the lenticular lenses that are touching each other as it fills in the gaps between the lenses that are necessary for the light bending. I can bond the smooth sides of each sheet together, but not the lens side. If manufactured properly, there would be no ripples in this material. Curving version 6 can correct for some of the distortions and begin to match the aspect ratio of the background. Version 7 is two pair of version 5s with one in front of the other. This corrects the orientation of the background and removes the multiple images. Version 8 places the larger lenses in the middle and the smaller lenses on the outside. The results are visually similar to version 5. And version 9 places the smaller lenses in the middle and the larger lenses on the outside. The results are visually similar to version 4. When we have a slightly different perspective of version 5 and version 4 when I turn it around, the material seems to be emulating the shape of a lenticular lens and refracting the background the same way as miniature lenticules do in version 1. It's as if we have a large lenticular sheet that should be inches thick, but it's only as thin as a piece of cardboard. This means we can hide larger items such as tanks, ships, buildings, aircraft hangars and such, with this thin, inexpensive material. If we had just scaled up versions 1, 2, 3 and beyond, the material would be very expensive and almost too heavy for most applications. <laughs> 